David Fincher seems to have an affinity for the dark and the macabre, evident in his filmography filled with murderers, home invaders, and various maniacs. Taking a break from painting the big screen red, Fincher took on the role of producer and director for the Netflix series Mindhunter, a visually stunning exploration of FBI agents profiling serial killers like Edmund Kemper. Despite its admiration, Mindhunter was more respected than loved, a sentiment consistent with Fincher's oeuvre, including his latest film, The Killer. In The Killer, starring Michael Fassbender as a nameless hitman, Fincher once again creates a world that is solitary, poor, nasty, and brutish, if not necessarily short-lived. Adapted from the French comic book of the same name by Alexis Nolan and Luc Jacquemont, the film introduces a hitman who is outwardly ordinary but inherently nihilistic. His worldview is bleak, with a constant disdain for others and a belief that the world is beyond redemption. While his profession and body count may not be the most intriguing aspects, what captivates, at least initially, is his dullness. The protagonist, despite engaging in violent activities and associating with fellow villains, is portrayed as a character filled with loathing and insipid thoughts. The film, much like the comic book, delves into his mundane yet ostensibly interesting existence, emphasizing his disdain for the world and his contemplative moments in solitude. In The Killer, Fincher continues his exploration of the darker aspects of human nature, presenting a character who, despite his profession, is ultimately defined by his unremarkable and mundane existence. The notion of an anti-Bond figure with a license to kill outside the law is an intriguing concept that struggles to shine amidst a sea of genre cliches. What distinguishes the comic is the stark contrast between the protagonist and Jackman's cinematic illustrations. The vivid hues, tilted angles, and interplay between realism and expressionism in the artwork keep you engaged, providing visual allure even when the narrative falters. In Fincher's film adaptation, the visual approach takes a relatively subdued turn. The screen is bathed in sulfurous yellow, with occasional flashy shots. True to Fincher's style, the film plunges into darkness, pushing visibility to its limits, especially in an extended dimly lit fight sequence. Penned by Andrew Kevin Walker, the movie streamlines the comic's verbose observations, trims the plot to its essence, injects some pop culture humor, the killer adopts sitcom aliases, and takes a swipe at WeWork. Fassbender's character remains talkative, mostly through voiceover, both during and between jobs. However, much of his dialogue feels repetitive and occasionally self-affirming. He mutters phrases like, Forbid empathy. Empathy is weakness. At times sounding like he's convincing himself or clearing his mind for the impending violent task. Other times, he appears to be offering paternal advice to aspiring practitioners of violence. This is what it takes if you want to succeed. A notable issue with the film arises from the absence of the killer's anti-humanist diatribes, historical insights, and political entanglements. Without these elements, what remains is primarily Fincher's directorial skill, Fassbender's restrained charisma, and the unsettling allure of watching malevolent characters execute evil acts with finesse. The killer, lacking a lover who serves more as a plot device than a developed character, possesses a luxurious beachfront house and a storage unit stocked with the tools of his trade, guns, and passports. However, he lacks a distinctive personality or a moral code that would add complexity to the violence, a characteristic found in the works of Jean-Pierre Melville and his followers. Essentially, the killer seems to exist as a means for Fincher to pass the time. Following a botched job that turns him into a target, the killer faces heightened tension and mystery as he navigates threats amid polyrhythmic gunfire and the dramatic entrances and exits of other archetypal characters. The lawyer, Charles Parnell, the client, Arliss Howard, the expert, Tilda Swinton, and the brute, Sala Baker. Throughout the film, Fassbender anchors the narrative with his graceful, controlled physicality and almost monotone voice. The character may be dull and the movie uninspiring, yet much like Fincher's exceptional ability to craft captivating visuals that capture your attention even as your thoughts wander, Fassbender manages to keep the audience engaged. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed our deep dive into the killer. If you agree with our take or think we missed something, please let us know in the comments below. Remember to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss out on our future movie reviews.